Well, this is uh, Mo's Repl in Perl. Um, my name is Mike Ricardo. I am a Perl developer in South Florida, um, software developer. And uh, this is going to be a 20 minute introductory talk. Um, so I'm going to be uh, covering a lot of different topics. Um, but since it's an in introductory talk, uh, I'm going to be spending most of my time on Mo's Repl itself and then Perl at the end. Uh, I'm really limited by time, but I'm going to try to cover as much as I can uh, within the time limit. Um, well, I got interested in Mo's Repl. I was working for a startup down in Fort Lauderdale, and uh, they were in mobile phone development. And I, um, they were doing screen scraping, where they were mobilizing websites on the fly. So they would go out, find a website, and uh, like a web form, had a web form or whatever, and then display it on a mobile device, whether it's a Blackberry or an iPhone. And one of the problems they had with um, WW Mechanize, a mech, was handling Ajax. Uh, it's a well-known problem. And so their solution was Mo's Repl. And uh, it could handle Ajax fine through screen scraping. And so that's how I, got how I got introduced to it. And I thought it was a really cool technology. And so I decided to give a, a talk about it. I'm not an expert on it, but I thought it was just something cool. Um, and certainly there's a, a lot of Perl support for it. There's about 34 modules on CPAN. So what is Mo's REPL? Well, it's a Firefox extension. Uh, most of you are probably familiar with the web developer extension and Firebug. Uh, as well. I use Firebug every day practically. Uh, it's great. It's awesome. And we're going to be talking about it a little bit um, next. But it's a Firefox extension. You get it from addons.mozilla.org. Uh, it acts like a TCP IP socket server within Firefox. You tell that to it, port 4242. Um, the developer chose 4242 because of Douglas Adams. Uh, it came out in 2005 by an Italian hacker who um, was using uh, Lisp and, and Ruby, and he wanted, he was writing Firefox extensions, and he wanted a REPL with an Emacs for um, Mozilla. As the name implies, it is a REPL for the Mozilla application. That's where the, of course, Moz comes from. And it provides a uh, read about print loop um, that directly inter interacts with the browser. Uh, so what is a, um, a REPL? Uh, it's a read about print loop. I'm sure most of you know what it is, but I, I just want to cover it since it's an intro talk. It's an inter interactive programming environment. It helps you learn a programming language quickly. Um, Perl does have one. I think it's Devil Repl. Yes. Matt Trout came out with it, or Mark Trout. Um, he's a big Catalyst guy that I've, I've interacted with on IRC. And I think there's also Perl Console as well. Um, so I, whenever I think of REPLs, I think of Python for some reason. But anyways, um, so it provides you a REPL, and you can basically interact with um, the guts of um, Mozilla. A lot of people who use it actually get excited about Mozilla because you start working with it, just learning about Gecko, the layout engine, Zool, which is the user interface language um, named after Ghostbusters, XUL. It's based on XML, very, very similar to HTML. Um, and of course, it, it uses JavaScript, the internal JavaScript engine for Mozilla. And that's how we were able to do um, interact with uh, Ajax. So you can execute JavaScript, play with the browser, GUI, sneak into HTML pages, examine functions, redefine them on the fly. Um, I wanted to do a demonstration. If I have time, I would. Basically, after you get the add-on, okay, you don't have to just use it for Firefox. You can use it for any Mozilla application, Thunderbird, Songbird, your instructions on how to do it. Um, but with Firefox, you just go down there, you add it, and then you start it, okay? Um, if there's a menu, and then you tell them that to port 4242. And, and then you're pre presented with a prompt. And then it's just basically, it's a REPL prompt that I'm sure most of you are familiar with. And from there, you can execute JavaScript. You can do like document dot title equals whatever um, do alerts, and then uh, you can you can basically you're presented with three different environments: um, uh, the uh, the Chrome browser, which is the uh, not the web page, 
but the actual brow the browser window okay, that lives outside the content area of the web page. You, can, you start there, and you can basically manipulate the elements from there. Um, and then from there, you can interact with the actual content area of the web page okay, using JavaScript. And then you can also program the REPL itself. You can, you can redefine stuff within it. So Firebug, which some of you are probably familiar with, just deals with the content area. Okay, I'm sure some of you how you can redefine CSS, JavaScript. It's just it's just with the web page. Now it's great. It has that GUI uh, that's really really good to use. Although sometimes I have problems with it. Um, and it's it's a very useful thing, but it doesn't do anything beyond the content page. Uh, now of course most REPL, it's just a prompt. Uh, so it's it's a little bit different. Um, doesn't have that great GUI. But there's a lot of interfaces, and we'll see that. Um, some people can consider it superior to Firebug. I like it. I like Firebug because of its good way how you can just interact with it that way. Um, it's a great tool, and uh, I don't think it's as popular as Firebug because it doesn't have that GUI. And I'm surprised that not too many people know about it. Um, seems to be bigger in Europe. The the person who came out with it uh, uh, is based in Europe, and it seems like all the CPAM modules. Uh, are from European uh, programmers and, and uh, Japanese programmers. So it's interesting um, to see who knows about it, who doesn't. So Perl, um, there are different interfaces to uh, Mo's REPL. Um, you can, it's very customizable, okay? You can, you can uh, customize and redefine things with it, but the interfaces that work with it, um, Perl is one, okay? Then there's a command line interface called Fresno, which is kind of cool, because um, you can then pipe commands like grep and stuff. And, um, and then also Emacs and Vim have some bindings. With Emacs, um, those of you who have used REPLs in Emacs, you can type stuff using Moz REPL and then not have to refresh the page. So as you're like typing a web page or, or trying out some JavaScript, you can do that without having to, to save it and then go over to your Firefox um, app and then reload. So you can do it all in real, real time. Um, and then Vim also has a binding, but it's not as extensive as Emacs. I haven't tried it out in Emacs. Um, I've only worked with, with Vim. But those are the two big ones. And then um, Perl, though, is the one, that, of course, that we're interested in the most. So most REPL provides a way for, for Perl to talk to, <coughs> to Firefox over TCP. And what's out there? I mean, what, first of all, why is that big? Well, what is Firefox? It's an accepted, compatible, interactive platform. And um, so if you're doing, you're working with Web 2.0 technologies, you know, you're testing or developing Web 2.0 technologies, that's huge to be able to have that, that platform available to you. And now it is because of Mozart. It, it, it's that bridge. Uh, you don't have that with Mac. Um, and there's a couple of other modules out there. There's WW Scripter, uh, which I haven't used, um, but I think it also suffers from that shortcomings uh, of Mac. Um, so there, there's a couple of other modules out there, um, but a couple of other solutions out there. But most REPL definitely seems to be the most robust. And um, so, of course, since Perl can now talk to Firefox, um, that brings that brings into CPAN. That brings into the equation CPAN and what what else you can do with Perl. Uh, Perl, of course, is ideal for web-related tasks, scraping, uh, different different um, all sorts of different stuff you can do with the web with it, um, automation, uh, and it is supported well supported on CPAN. Um, most of the modules, uh, the two biggest modules, would of course be the interface itself, which is most important. And um, that's pretty straightforward. That's basically um, scripting um, most REPL from Perl. Let me, let me give you a, an example. So here, after you add, after you add uh, the add-on, you go to Tools, and you'll see most REPL right here. I'm going to stop it. But then you just go ahead and start, OK? From there, once it's started, you can then tell net to it port 4242 and you'd be, you be presented with a prompt. I was having trouble with my Windows machine, so I'm using uh, Mo's REPL panel. Um, 
which um, it's usually used, it's, it's built on Zool Runner. Uh, it's usually used for people who do have trouble telemetting to it. It's just, a, it's just another add-on that you can get and you can, you can interact with it. So this is what it looks like, the prompt itself. And some commands. The REPL commands are prefaced, prefaced with uh, REPL. Okay. I think it's because I have, yeah, I have two open, that's why. Okay. So when you start off, you start off in the Chrome window. And you're not, this is not the web page itself, but it's the browser window. Um, so the Chrome window is basically the unif uh, user interface window. The, uh, all these different, everything you see around here. Uh, but it's not the actual web page itself. So it's telling me right here the document title. And if I wanted to change it or execute some JavaScript. And you can see that the title changed right here, the Perl Oasis. If I wanted to hide let's say the menu bar, the toolbar at the top, where it says file, edit, view, history, you can do it executing that command. Um, and that was just JavaScript down here. It says document, get element by ID, toolbar, menu bar, hidden true. So it's an internal JavaScript engine for Mozilla. So you can manipulate the browser itself. Okay? And from there, you can go to different web pages. Now, because I'm using the panel, what will happen is it will go to that web page, but then I'll lose this panel, unfortunately. Um, and that's just a shortcoming. But you can execute JavaScript and stuff. Now, I'm sure most of you are thinking, okay, big deal. Okay, but when, when you interact with it with Perl, you don't have to go through the prompt. You can basically script it. And then when you interact, once you're able to work with Firefox itself, <coughs> you can then um, you can then automate the browser. So probably the biggest, the most, the most interesting module out there for it is WW Mechanize Firefox. Okay, which basically you use Firefox as you would uh, Mechanize, and um, it's to me the most interesting module out there on CPAN using Mozilla. And really, it's worthy of a talk in and of itself. And uh, unfortunately, I don't have enough time. But basically, just think of Selenium. Those of you who have used Selenium, it's basically just like Selenium. You're basically automating the web browser. You can, you can control remote Firefox sessions. Okay, You have to be using X, by the way. If you're on a Unix-based system, you have to have a Unix session. Um, but it, it basically... You're basically automating Firefox. You can you can you can send clicks, key presses. Um, it opens up a lot of different things that you can do. Uh, it's it's really really you can do crazy things with it. You can take screenshots. Um, you can uh, automate uh, download dialogs. Um, you can do a lot of different type of file conversions with it. So it's a really cool module on CPAN. Um, there's a lot of extensive documentation on it. Uh, it's pretty popular right now. Um, I don't have enough time to cover everything about it, but I would advise you to look at it. Um, and uh, so, so that's it's it's great for for develop. It's a great development um, tool to have. Uh, MozRepl Remote Object, which is part of Mechanized Firefox, basically allows you to use JavaScript objects as Perl objects, um, which is important for for mechanized Firefox. Um, this module basically extends um, Mac. And so that's probably, again, that's the module that um, I find the most interesting. 
and, and it's the most powerful thing out there. And of course, it does use MosRepl, the most Coral MosRepl interface. This interface right here is very straightforward, okay, um, and how to use it. Uh, the documentation is just basically MosRepl, and it just allows you to use MosRepl from Coral. Um, so, in conclusion, MosRepl provides you a clean way to interact with Firefox. And of course, Perl and MosRep are a very powerful combination. And that is it. I, I really wish I could have gone more into um, mechanized Firefox, uh, but I just wanted to give you a pretty broad overview about what MosRep is and what you can do with it currently. Questions? I was just wondering, can you reach into the state of an existing open window, or does it only work to like create new windows? Yes, you can, you, can, you, can, you can go into the state of an existing window, um, there are also um, there's there's a lot of modules out there. You can you can look into, um, for example, uh, cookies on, on the current instance of Firefox. Um, you can send cookies back and forth. Uh, you can also get into browser internals too, of course. Um, it opens up the Mozilla application to you. Neat. Yeah, it's neat. It's a neat. It's a neat piece of software. Any other questions? Um, have you done um, for like doing all right wherever it's looking at the contents of the page? Do you know offhand if you can tell the visibility of the elements by chance? It's kind of weird. Oh sure, question. sure. You can look at the CSS. The so you can look at the CSS. Yes. At least. Yes, it gives you the DOM, and you can see the right. oh. How do you use this in everyday? Do you use it at work every day, or? How do you, how do you use it? What specifically are you testing? I don't use it every day. Um, it was actually, I used it at a job for a startup that got acquired. Um, and we were using it um, to interact with uh, uh, websites um, because Mech couldn't scrape Ajax. It was having trouble with Ajax. And uh, most, most people was able to handle it. Um, and what we had is we had a Firefox form. Uh, but we were using Firefox as the model in the MVC platform. We didn't have like a, a relational database. We basically had a bunch of Firefox sessions. And, um, and that was our model. And then from there, we were screen scraping it and taking that data and mobilizing it from mobile platforms. Um, after, that, after that company was acquired, I, I started working on another job doing a lot of fire, getting into Firebug a lot, seeing how much fun that is. But I really didn't forget about Mo's Rebel. And it, so, it's, uh, so it's something that I just felt I wanted to share with others and talk about. But currently, I don't use it. Um, I don't use it every day. I think a lot of people, I'm not a big Emacs user. And there's a really good, there's really good integration with Emacs and, and most Rebel. And how you can just like test stuff out without having to reload the browser, that sort of stuff. It really speeds up development for people who are using Emacs. Um, but currently, I don't use it every day. Um, so I used it uh, a few years back doing, before Selenium would do um, screen shots for beyond your display. So you want to take a picture of the full page and come up top the screen. Um, so for frame grabber, screen grabber, whatever, there's a plugin for that. Um, we were driving uh, Selenium scripts in Perl, and then we were doing the MozRepl to take the screenshots that way. That's what allows you to expand the entire screen shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you know your screen is bigger right. than what you see, and you want the whole thing because you don't want to Photoshop. Okay. So there was a plugin for that. I think Selenium doesn't need it now, but it didn't. So we were using the two together. That was really nice. Can you simulate mouse movement as well? Yes, mm -hmm. you can. You can. Um, you can do. Uh, you can simulate mouse movement. You can um, simulate key presses. Uh, you can send key presses, send mouse clicks um, with it. It's, uh, it's a very powerful uh, tool. I, I, would, I would point everyone to WW Mechanized Firefox if you want to get started with it. Um, and you can see some of the crazy stuff you can, you can do with it. Anything else? Anyone else? There's automation tasks. That would be cool. For automating tasks. Right. That, that includes... Ajax and things that you can't really do easily with mechanized. Mm -hmm. um, it's like Selenium in a, in, in a sense. Uh, I mean, if you're really good with Perl, though, I mean, Selenium is usually used for people who don't who don't program 
you, you can use it with people who don't, who don't know a programming language. Um, but it, it sort of mirrors what you would see on here quite well. All right, well, thank you.